All right, we are back in the lab looking at some power data from Athens Twilight, which was just about two weeks ago. And I got my buddy Ferg, who not only let me mount a GoPro to his handlebars, but also sent me his power files after the race. So this is going to be fun because not only did Ferg get some good action on the GoPro lapping the field, now we can see his power numbers from that effort at the Athens Twilight Race. Him and eight other riders break away and lap the field. A nine man breakaway laps the field and he was one of those riders. So looking at his stats before we actually jump into the numbers and obviously we can compare these to mine who sat in the field and finished 20th, whereas Ferg lapped the field and got 7th. Uh, there's some good comparisons there, not comparisons, con contrasts of uh, what his effort looked like versus mine being lazy, sitting in the field, uh, you know, playing the good teammate card of not doing anything the whole race. So, Ferg only weighs a couple pounds more than me, 71 kilograms, I'm at 70. His normalized for the whole race was 343, whereas mine is a 312. So not, not too big of a difference, but definitely going harder. And when you look at the watts per kilogram, that's 4.4 versus 4.8. So uh, Ferg obviously has a little bit more watts than I do, or at least he did in that race. Now, if we look at the comparison, I didn't know any better way to do this than to just segment it into 15 minute chunks. So for the first 15 minutes, uh, I'm at 4.8 watts, he's at 5.1. We actually were right next to each other at the start because I started really far back and Fergus was having shifting issues so he drifted back to where I was. So for the first 15 or so minutes, we're just trying to get to the front of the race and it takes a while to do that because the, the field is so big and we were so far back and you can only move up so many positions through, throughout, the, throughout each lap. And you don't wanna just burn one huge match just to get to the front. You want to try to do it in the most conservative way. So that's why it takes us about 15 or 20 minutes just to get to the front of the race before we can actually start to be a part of that race. And you can see in both Ferg's and in my power file that at about 15 or 20 minutes was when our power starts to hit bigger spikes because now we're actually being where the action is and we're following moves and we're attacking. And that's when uh, the efforts just get harder is when we're at the front of the race. So for the first 15 minutes, like I said, I'm at 339 or a 4.8, he's at 364, 5.1. Second 15 minutes, this is where it kind of starts to differ, is I'm at 333, he's at 349. So he's bumped up quite a bit, 4.9. And then this is where it really starts to differ, is in that third 15 minute segment. So this would be from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And this was when Ferg was really trying hard to get into that break versus me, whereas I had just tried to get in the break and now I'm trying to recover because I'm a little bit redlined, whereas he has a little bit more juice in the tank. And so you've got me at a 311 normalized, he's at a 363, that's a 4.4 versus a 5.1. Uh, definitely uh, mad watts there, Ferg. Um, now, and then for the rest of the race, I'm at 297, 269, 292. So for 45 minutes, I'm not going super hard at a 4.4, or sorry, 4.2, 3.8, 4.2. Now, granted, those numbers, 4.2, Ferg never even got to a 4.2 throughout the entire race. He stayed at a 4.4 or higher for the entirety of the race, whereas half of my race is a 4.2 or lower, which is kind of interesting. Now, for his middle of the race, so this is once he's got into the breakaway and that breakaway is established, He's at a 4.4, 4.8, a 4.6. Now, his highest or his, I think the biggest match that he burned was right here where he did a 4.8. Um, and it doesn't quite show it here, but I'm gonna show you this in a minute. But at the end, this is once Ferg has lapped the field and now he's back in the peloton and we're working together to get him to the finish. And our numbers are almost exactly the same, 334 and 335 which puts us very similar uh, for those last 15 minutes because we were trying to stay as linked up as possible right at the front of the race. Makes sense. Now, I wanted to point out a few of Ferg's big moments during the race. I could do this for me, but I didn't really have that many big moments, so we're just gonna look at Ferg's numbers. Uh, you can tell, like I said, about 20 minutes into the race, 
where Ferg is trying really hard to make that breakaway happen. So he's at 402 for five minutes. And that's not a sustained effort. That's spikes and dips and turns and everything. But for five minutes, he's at a 402 normalized power. And his average is 391, which means that those two, it wasn't like they were just huge spikes. I mean, like he was on the gas really hard. And I think in the video you saw him and Brian Gomez trading turns for a while. That's probably where this is happening. He's trying to establish that breakaway with other strong riders. So he's putting out mad watts. Now that comes pretty early. That's like 20 minutes into the race. And we know that the, the break didn't actually get established until about 40 or 45 minutes into the race. Now, uh, here's another one. This is about, ooh, I don't know, about 40 minutes into the race. I think this is where uh, the, the break was actually happening. And this is for the first minute and a half of where that break is happening, or I think maybe Ferg was bridging from the peloton to that breakaway because it had already got a gap and Ferg was like, oh snap, there it goes, I'm gonna miss out. And so he jumps across and in a minute and a half, he does a 451. That's nuts. 451 normalized power for a minute and a half. Right in the middle of a crit. It's not like he just did that fresh. I mean, like 450. I could go do 450 for a minute and a half fresh. He's already been racing for 45 minutes. Like, that's impressive. All right, now, here's another one. So then he gets into the break, um, and obviously he's, uh, you know, pushing really hard. And we obviously, as Roadhouse, we don't have a massive sprinter on our team. So we're usually a breakaway kind of rider. Uh, we're, we're, we're pushing for a break to happen and to get Ferg in the break was exactly what we wanted and so The question is how hard do you go to get a rider in the break and how hard do you go once that break is established? Well for the first 12 and a half minutes of this break and it seems like this is the break that's gonna be the break for the race Ferg average is about 354 normalized power for the first 12 and a half minutes and then after that he settles into a lower power now I think what was happening was Ferg was very excited and very eager and wanted that break to happen. And eventually once, once our team directors and the guys on the radio realize, all right, this is it, this is the break, Ferg, chill out, he finally listens and for the next 20 minutes he chills out. He does normal turns. He's not taking extra pulls. He's not pulling extra long. He's not pulling extra hard. They're sharing the work amongst them and Ferg isn't putting more into it than he needs to because it's already established. I think that's smart and that was our team directors letting him know that through the, through the radios. But for the first 12 and a half minutes, he obviously was putting out mad watts to try to make that break stick. Now, another one, this is, um, now this is I think Ferg's biggest mistake but I also think you got to take risks right like the guy who's went willing to lose the race might win the race and Ferg was willing to lose the race with this effort so what he does is right when they're about to lap the field Ferg attacks the breakaway and so he gets to the field before the rest of the breakaway while they're still chasing to get there so that gives him an extra you know extra few minutes or moments to get through the peloton and get to the front and then what he does is beyond me then he attacks so he he laps the field goes through the field and then he attacks and he's off the front and he's off the front solo and he does this effort for 15 minutes for 15 minutes ferg is off the front maybe it was a little too far out from the finish but it was definitely a big effort like he burned a huge huge match trying to go solo off the front and it was a bummer and maybe we should have been communicating this to him or maybe it was just like so awesome that we're like dude maybe it's worth it like even if this doesn't work it was such a cool move that you're like it's hard not to root for the guy you're like dude you just attacked after lap in the field like come on but anyways for 15 minutes he averages 369 normalized power that's insane and what, what we'll notice here is not only is his power higher, but it's more consistent. You can see in the graph how up and down and up and down it is, but then for that 15 minutes he's off the front, it's pretty steady. So Ferg is really good at finding that sweet spot of, all right, this is as hard as I can go to where I think I could go this hard to the finish. 
And that's what he's doing at 369 watts for 15 minutes. But unfortunately, the big teams were kind of just sitting there watching him do his thing. I could tell by the way Legion and their American Cycling team were riding and how bunched up the Peloton was that it probably wasn't going to stick. I knew that eventually they were going to bring back Ferg uh, and chase him down, but it was still an awesome move and kudos to, to you for, for, for trying. Um, most people wouldn't even try a move like that. So the, the fact that you had the guts to do it is awesome. Now the only other thing that I, I wanted to point out was that Ferg's last five minutes and my last five minutes were almost identical. We both averaged about 340 normalized power for the last five minutes and we finished right next to each other because I was trying to do my best to lead Fergus out to get him closer to the front. Um, but it turns out I didn't have the legs to do that. So I did my best and he ends up about seventh, I end up 20th. Um, and I, I think that's pretty good. But we're left at the end of the day wondering what could we have done better? Now, these are the questions you have to ask yourself. How many matches do you burn to make that breakaway stick? And how could Ferg use his teammates in a better way to improve his finishing position? Now, once he lapped the field, I think obviously going off the front for 15 minutes was a huge deterrent in him getting a higher finishing position. However, how, what if, if he didn't do that, what could he have done instead to have saved his matches and got a better position at, at the end? Now, none of his teammates were really there to help lead him out. I tried to do my best and it wasn't that great of a lead out. So how can we as teammates be better teammates to Ferg in those situations where we can link up and make a better plan happen to get him finishing higher. Seventh isn't that bad, but when you think about seventh out of nine, it's not, it's not great. But seventh is seventh at Athens, and that's amazing. I just, we're always wondering, what can we do to do better? How can we help Fergus improve his position? How can we as a team get somebody on that elite level podium? And if you don't know, Stay tuned, because the day after Athens, that just might happen. Ooh, cliffhanger. Now, if you like these videos, be sure to do all the things that you can to support them. You can like them and share with them. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm going to make that a public goal, 10,000 by the end of the year, 2023. Uh, other ways that you can support me are through Ignition Coach Coat. If you're looking for a coach, look no further. Ignition Coach Coat can hook you up with a top-notch, science-based coach. Uh, me and Dylan have spent a plenty of time pouring into these coaches and trying to develop them into great coaches. And we are doing our best to develop coaches, connect athletes. Other ways you can support me are Patreon, and then also there are training plans available. Both of those links are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.